Hello, welcome to this class. In the previous class, I think we have explained how a structure or how a nested structure can be initialized and how the data can be accessed from the nested structure. Now, today's class we will see how to read the data from the nested structure and how to write the data into the nested structure. Now, if you observe here we have a structure consisting of uh, marks, marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3. How many fields are there? 3 fields are there and this structure marks is used as the data type in another structure whose name is a student. So, this is a type defined structure, this is also a type defined structure. In this type defined structure, we have used marks as the data type which is another structure. So, we say it is a nested structure. Okay, now, here the variable s is initialized with ram the data 100, 25, 24 and 23 and this is how the data is stored in the structure. Now, let us see how to access this data from the memory. Now, here the entire set of memory location can be accessed by the common name S here. Now, can you tell me using this variable S, yes, how can you access this field name? s dot name. So, we use the dot operator here, I write s dot name. So, if you write s dot name, what is the name that you get here? Ram. Now, I want to get a USA number. To get a USA number 100, again you have to use a variable s followed by dot followed by USN. So, here I write s dot USN and we get 100. Now, to get 25, 25 is field marks 1. But remember that marks 1, marks 2, marks 3 are the fields of this structure whose, which is identified by the variable m. But remember this m itself is filled within a big structure here. So, before accessing marks 1, we should be in a position to access m. So, how you can access m using the variable s? We write s dot m. After s dot m, now using m either we can access marks 1 or we can access marks 2 or we can access marks 3. So, using m how you can access marks 1? So, again you have to use dot operator here. So, what should I write here? Dot followed by what? Marks 1. Now, what is s dot m dot marks 1? We get 25. So, here I write 25. Next, to access field marks 2. So, what you have to write? s dot m dot marks 2. So, here I write s dot m dot marks 2. So, what we get here? 24 we get. Similarly, tell me how you can access this field using the variable s? s dot m dot marks 3. So, here I write s dot m dot marks 3. Now, tell me what data is, what data we are going to get? 23. Now, if I want to display this information on the monitor. So, I should use which statement here? Printf. So, if I write printf s dot name, what is there in s dot name? Ram. So, we are going to display Ram on the screen. Similarly, to display s dot usn, what is s dot usn? 100. So, to display 100, what statement I have to use here? Printf percentage d. So, here I get 100. Similarly, to get 25, I can write s dot m dot marks 1, this is 25. That, that 25 has to be displayed. For that, what is the statement to be used? Printf. So, here what is the output we get? 25. So, using s dot m dot marks 2, I get 24. That 24, I have to display on the screen. So, for that, again I can use printf statement, so that we can get 24, on, 24 as the output. Similarly, s dot m dot marks 3 means what I get 23, that 23 I should display. So, for that I will be using printf statement. So, what is the output we get here? 23. So, this is how the data can be read from the structure and that can be displayed onto the screen as shown here. Okay, now, let us see, one, we know how to read the data from the memory and display it onto the screen. Now, the question is into this nested structure, how we can store the data in this structure, to this structure, how can we store the data by reading the data from the keyboard. Now, let us see how to read the data from the keyboard and store the data into this structure. 
So, for that instead of using printf statement, I can use what scanf here. The moment I write scanf, it means we are trying to enter the data from the keyboard. Suppose I enter RAM from the keyboard, that RAM should be copied to which location? Yes dot name. So, that uh, yeah, RAM will come here and remember RAM is a string, it should end with what? Null character. So, null character is automatically appended at the end. Now, next I want to read USN. If I want to read USN into this location, so here instead of printf, what should I use? Scanf. Now, if I enter 100 from the keyboard, if I enter 100 from the keyboard, that 100 will be copied into this memory location S dot USN. But remember, when we are using printf, we are not supposed to use ampersand and so on, but when we are using scanf, here we are supposed to use ampersand. Similarly, to read the data into this memory location, which is identified by S dot M dot marks 1. So, do not use printf, instead use what scanf. So, here I should not write simply S dot M dot marks 1, instead what should I write here? Ampersand. So, let me write ampersand here. Now, if I enter 25 from the keyboard, that 25 will be copied into this memory location. Similarly, to read the data into this memory location, how you can access this memory location? S dot M dot marks 2. So, replace the printf with what? Scanf. Now, if I enter say uh, again, here instead of writing instead of writing S dot M dot marks 2, here what you have to write? Ampersand. And if I enter 24 from the keyboard, that 24 will be copied into this memory location. Similarly, to read data into S dot M dot marks 3, that is into this particular field, instead of using printf statement, what we can use is scanf statement, scanf. So, at the same time, we have to proceed, okay, this one with ampersand. Now, if I enter 23 from the keyboard, that 23 will be copied into this memory location. I hope uh, you understood how to read the data from the keyboard and copy that data into nested structure like this. Okay, next, uh, now let us see. Now, here instead of writing the structure like this, I slightly move the structure to the top. Now, I declare one variable s yes, which is of type what student. Now, let us see how to write a program. Now, the moment I say yes is of type of student, what will happen? Memory will be allocated and the name given to this memory location is what? Yes. What is the first field we have here? Name is an array of 10 characters. So, 10 characters will be 10 bytes will be reserved and the name uh, given to that memory location is name. And here you have uh, USN which is of type what? Integer. So, 2 bytes will be reserved for the variable and what is the name given to those two memory locations? USN. And next what we have here M, M is of type what marks, marks has how many fields? 3 fields. So, here 2 bytes for marks 1, another 2 bytes for marks 2, another 2 bytes for marks 3. So, the end memory is allocated for the structure M. So, what is the name given for this structure? It is M. Next, if you observe uh, memory is allocated for name USN and this structure marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3. Okay, now, let us see how to read the data from the keyboard. Now, I want to display name on the screen. Now, tell me if I write a printf name equal to, can you tell me what will happen? Name will be displayed on the screen. Once the name is displayed, here we are supposed to enter the name. If you want to enter the name from the keyboard, first of all, we should have one scanf statement in the program. So, I write scanf percentage yes. So, how to access this field? Yes dot name. So, here I write yes dot name. Now, if I execute this statement and if I press a beam from the keyboard, that beam will be copied into which location? Name. So, here that beam will be copied into this memory location. Because it is a string, the string always ends with what? Null character. Next, I want to disp I want to enter USN from the keyboard. So, it is our responsibility as a programmer to display appropriate message that can be done using which statement? Printf. I write printf USN equal to. Now, can you tell me what will happen? This message USN equal to displayed as it is on the screen. 
by looking at this message if I have to enter the data from the keyboard in the program you should have one scanf statement. So, I write scanf percentage d ampersand what s dot usn. Now, if I enter say 101 from the keyboard and that 101 will be copied into which field usn. Similarly, if I want to display what is the next one I should display marks one I should display. So, here I write marks one equal to. So, if I write marks one equal to that marks one will be displayed as it is on the screen. Now, if I want to read the data from the keyboard, what statement you should have in the program? Scanf. So, here I write scanf percentage d ampersand s dot m dot marks 1. Now, if I enter say 98 from the keyboard, that 98 will be copied into this memory location. Similarly, if I want to I want to read the data into which field now? Marks 2. So, display the message marks 2 equal to. Now, the moment I execute this statement, what will happen? Marks 2 will be displayed on the screen. Now, if I enter one data here, to, if I want to read the data from the keyboard, what statement I should have here? Scanf. So, I write scanf percentage d ampersand s dot m dot marks 2. Now, what will happen? If I press 99 from the keyboard, that 99 will be copied into this memory location. Now, tell me into this field, I have to enter the data. So, let us try to display the appropriate message. Can you tell me what message I have to display now? I should display printf marks 3 equal to, if I write printf marks 3 equal to, what will be displayed on the screen? Marks 3 equal to will be displayed on the screen. Now, I have to enter the data from the keyboard. To enter the data from the keyboard, we should have scanf statement in the program. So, I write scanf percentage d ampersand s dot m dot what field I have to write? Here marks 1 over, marks 2 over, next we have to enter what? Marks 3. So, if I enter, if I enter 97 from the keyboard, that 97 will be copied into this memory location. I hope you understood how to display the appropriate message on the screen, how to read the data from the keyboard and store that data using the structure. Okay, next, now let us try to display it. Tell me how you access this field now? Yes dot name and that has to be displayed on the screen. So, for that I use a printf statement. So, I write printf name equal to now, what will happen? This name equal to will be displayed as it is. It has to be followed by what? Beam. How you access beam now? Yes dot name. So, here I write yes dot name. Now, whatever is there within the double code except percentages and slash n that is name equal to will be displayed as it is. When I say percentages, we are displaying a string. String stored in which variable? Name. What is there in name now? Beam. So, what is the output we get here? Beam. Next, to display this message onto the screen, so let us display one more message using printf statement. I write printf usn equal to. So, if I exit this statement, what should happen here? We get usn equal to as it is. Percentage d slash n. Now, I get usn equal to. We are supposed to display an integer value. Which value has to be displayed now? USN value. How to access this USN? Using the variable S, yes, what we have to write here? S yes, dot USN. Now, if I execute this statement, this 101 will be displayed on the screen. Now, tell me here what message you want now? Marks 1 equal to. So, to get marks 1 equal to, tell me what is the statement I should write here? I use a printf statement. So, I want marks 1 equal to percentage d slash n close the double quote. So, this marks 1 equal to will be displayed as it is. Now, you are supposed to display an integer value. Which value have to display? Marks 1. What is marks 1? 98. Now, using the variable less, how you can access this structure first of all? This structure is identified by m. So, using this s, s dot m we can write. So, here I write s dot m. For using m, how you can access marks 1? We should write m dot marks 1. So, here I write m dot marks 1. Now, if I execute this statement, what is s dot m dot marks 1? 98, that 98 will be displayed on the screen. Next, tell me what is the message to be displayed here? Marks 2. 
what statement I should use? Can I use scanf? Can I use if statement? No. If I want to display anything on the screen, I should go for printf. So, I write printf. What message has to be displayed here? Marks to equal to. So, here we write marks to equal to percentage d slash and close double quote comma. Now, if I execute this part, what, we, what is displayed on the screen? Marks to equal displayed. Now, I want marks to means which one? 99. How you access 99? Using the variable s, s dot m dot marks to. So, here we write s dot m dot marks to. Now, what, what is read from the memory? 99 is read from the memory and that is displayed on the screen. Finally, I want marks 3 equal to. So, to get marks 3 equal to on the screen, here we have to use printf statement. Printf marks 3 equal to percentage d slash and close double quote comma. Now, here marks 3 equal to will be displayed as it is. Now, here you are supposed to display an integer value. Which value? Marks 3 value stored here. So, how you access this marks now? Using the variable s, s dot m dot followed by marks 3. So, here I write s dot m dot marks 3. Now, what will happen? What is read from the keyboard? Uh, what, what is read from the memory? 97 is read from the memory and that will be displayed onto the screen. I hope you understood how to display the appropriate messages on the screen, how to read the data into the nested structure, how to read the data from the nested structure and display it onto the screen. Now, if this is a program, this is the main program, all these statements, whatever I written here, all these statements must be enclosed within braces and here we write void main. Now, if you observe here we are using printf and here we are using scanf. The declaration of a printf statement and the declaration of scanf is available in one header file by name stdio.h. So, you should go here and write hash include stdio.h. So, this is a complete program to read the data into the nested structure and to display the data from the nested structure onto the screen. Okay, now, let us take another program. Let us see how to arrange student records in alphabetical order and let us try to use the nested structures again. Now, for the, for the explanation purpose, I will take only four fields. Suppose you have name followed by roll number, followed by marks and followed by grade. And here we have say one name Amitabh roll number is 100, 585 marks and grade is A and so on. We have one more name Sachin, Arjun, Bhim and Modi. So, these are the five names. I have to arrange all these names in alphabetical order. As I am going to arrange the entire data, the entire data corresponding to Amitha Bachchan should be there in the beginning and it has to be followed by what? Arjun 102, 560 followed by grade B. Okay, because we are arranging in alphabetical order. So, first what, is, what should I get after sorting Amitabh followed by Arjun, then Bhim, then Modi and then finally I want Sachin. So, this is the output. So, let us try to arrange all these records in alphabetical order. Now, first let me try to access this data. The name, roll number, marks and A can be accessed using A of 0 and this can be accessed using A1 and this can be accessed using A2, A3 and A4. Now, A0 contains one structure, A1 contains another structure, A2 contains another structure, A3 contains another structure and A4 also contain another structure. Now, tell me what does this A? Definitely, A is an array, array, array of what? Array of structures. Okay, now, let us see how many elements are there here? 5 elements, 5 names have to arrange. So, I write n equal to 5. Okay, now, for the sake of explanation purpose, I have used this. But here, let me instead of using roll number and marks, I do not want to use roll number, I do not want to use marks. Let me use marks 1, marks 2 as well as what? Marks 3. And let us use one more keyword struct. So, what is this structure called now? Are you having any tag name? So, it is not a tagged structure and we do not have any name. So, it is 
it is not a tagged structure it is tagged as structure if I write type def here it becomes type defined structure so here I have to write an identifier say marks now let me use name and average name is of type what a character average is of type what float let me use marks 1 marks 2 and marks 3 here so what I do I use m m is of type marks if I write m is of type marks it means using m I can access marks 1 marks 2 as well as what marks 3 so here I write m is of type marks all these variables I enclose within braces like this and here I write a structure again it is it is not having any tag name so it is tagged as a structure if I write a type def here it becomes a type defined structure in this structure we are having one more structure so definitely it is called what nested structure now if it is a type defined structure we should have an identifier here so let me write a student now here I want to read the names of all the students so for that let me assume I have one function by name read student details how to write this function that we will see later for reading student details tell me what we require we require array a and we require one more what is that n so a is an array array we require and n also we require but what is a a is of type what student a is an array of students so here I write student n what is 5 here 5 is of type integer so here I write n is of type integer and you I uh, hope you, uh, you know how to write a function these are called parameters all these parameters must be enclosed within parenthesis something like this so this is a function read student details remember we have not written this particular function we have simply declared this line is called function declaration it is also called function prototype now after reading the student details let us write one more function write student details what is the responsibility of this function read student details we have to read the data from the keyboard all n students information we are supposed to read the data from the keyboard and store it in the variable a and what should be the responsibility of write student details whatever is there in a what is a a is an array whatever you have stored how many elements you have stored in a n elements we have stored a is of type what a student n is of type integer so all these parameters must be enclosed within a parenthesis like this so what should be the responsibility of write student details whatever is there in the memory that has to be displayed as it is onto the screen now read student details over write student details is over immediately after reading before writing let us try to sort the numbers so here I write sort student details for that again what we require a is required what is a a is an array and how many elements you have to sort n elements you have to sort so what is this a a is record of students so I write student here n is of type integer again these are the two parameters those two parameters must be enclosed within braces like this okay now how many function prototypes are there three function prototypes are there one is for read student details another to write student details another to sort student details now let me see let, let us explain let me explain how to enter the student details from the keyboard now here let us write the main program first here I write read student details for this here how many parameters are there two parameters are there what is the first parameter a what is the second parameter n so here I write a comma n and those two are uh, these are called arguments these are called what are parameters they are also called actual parameters if we use the word actual parameter here we can use the word formal parameter so here argument that is a comma n must be enclosed within a parenthesis like this after reading the student details let us try to sort the student details let by calling this particular function so how to call this function write sort student details again for that we require array a and n and those two arguments again must be enclosed within a parenthesis 
So, here we read the student details, here we sort the student details and sorted student details will be available in the variable A. Now, after sorting what we should do? Display it using the write student details function. So, here I write write student details for displaying the student details what you require? A we require, N we require. So, two arguments and here you have how many parameters? Two parameters number of arguments and number of parameters, type of arguments and type of parameters should match. Now, these two arguments must be enclosed within parenthesis like this. So, here we read the student details, store it in A. Here we sort the student details, sorted student details are available in the variable A and finally, we are displaying the student details which are available in the variable A. Now, tell me what is only unknown here n. So, we have to supply the value for n. How we can supply the value for n? Here we have to write scan f. So, scan f percent hd ampersand n. Normally, before scan f we write print f, print f enter the number of students. Now, tell me what are all the variables we are using here n and a. So, here we write n is of type integer n is of type integer, what about a? a is an array of a student records. All these statements must be enclosed within braces like this and here we write void main. Again, the declaration of printf, the declaration of scanf is available in stdio.h. So, go here and write hash include stdio.h. Why I am using string dot h? It will it will be explained later. Here in the sorting student details, we sort the student details based on the mark, and it is not based on the mark. It is incre in increasing order of the uh, student name, increasing order of the student name. So we have to compare two strings. For comparing two strings, we are using one function by name strcmp. It is available in string dot h. So I am including string dot h here. Okay. I hope uh, you understood how to write the program. Now, this program is written by assuming we have how many functions, one read student details and another write student details and one more you have sort student details. First, let us see one by one. Now, I want to write a function to read the student details. Now, tell me what is the first field in the structure we have name, it takes how many bytes 10 bytes and then what we have marks 1 2 bytes, marks 2 2 bytes, marks 3 2 bytes and finally, what you have average which takes 4 bytes. So, this is the entire structure, what is the name of the structure and what is the size of the structure here it is 20 bytes, see here 10 bytes. 10 plus 6, 16, 16 plus 4, how much? 20 bytes. So, the size of this structure is 20 bytes. Now, if uh, we can store the student information in A0, A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on. So, in general, I say A of i dot name, A of 0 dot name. So, if I want to enter the first student details, what should be the value of i here? 0. So, a of in general let me write a of i dot name and here what is the statement to be used? Scanf statement and next I should read the marks into this field. So, how to access, how to access this field? a of i dot m dot marks 1. So, a of i dot m dot marks 1. So, I can use scanf statement. Now, tell me how to read the data into this, we have to write ampersand a of i dot m dot marks 2 and here again I have to write scan of statement and remember we are using percentage d format specifier for reading the integer values. One more integer value I have to read. So, how you access this field now using the variable a of i, I can write a of i dot m dot marks 3, again I write scan f percentage d ampersand a of i dot m dot marks 3. Now, tell me how you access this field, I can write ampersand a of i dot average and here we use a format specifier percentage f and again I write scan f statement. Now, now look here, if I enter ram from the keyboard, RAM should be copied into this memory location and it should end with what null character. If I execute this statement and if I enter 25 from the keyboard, that 25 should be copied into this memory location. 
Similarly, if I enter 24 when I exit this statement, 24 should be copied into this memory location. And finally, if I enter 23 as the marks, the 23 should be copied into which field marks 3 here. And finally, if I want to enter average say 24.5 and that will be copied into this particular field. Okay. Now, we have entered the marks of which student, first student, in that case I should be what 0, I can be 1, I can be 2, I can be 3 and so on. So, now let us see how to write this function in detail. I will move this statement here. Earlier, if you remember, look at this statement. This line ends with what semicolon here, observe here, it is semicolon, it is a function declaration. Now, that statement, I remove semicolon here and I will move to the beginning. Now, here, what should I enter? Name. Before entering the data from the keyboard, let me display appropriate name onto the screen. So, how you display name on the screen? I can use printf statement. Here we should enter what? Marks 1. So, what is the message I should write here? Printf marks 1 equal to. Here we are entering marks 2. So, here I write printf marks 2 equal to. Here we are entering marks 3. So, here what should I write? Printf marks 3 equal to. Now, by looking at this, here we are trying to read the average value for the student. Now, what should be the message I should write here? printf average equal to. Okay, now, you should tell me what should be the value of i. If i is equal to 0, we are entering the student first student details, first student details. If i is equal to 1, second student details. If i is equal to 2, third student details and so on. So, here all these statements must be repeatedly executed for all the values of i ranging from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, all these statements I enclose within the braces and here I write for i equal to 0, i less than n, i plus plus. Now, apart from a and apart from n, only the variable what I am using here it is i. So, I write int i. And this declaration and this for loop must be enclosed within braces here. So, I open the brace and I close the brace here. So, this is how you have to write the function read student details. I hope we already we have written the function. Earlier, I have not written the function read student details. Now, I told you how to write the function to read n students from the keyboard using which function read student details. Now, let us see how to arrange the numbers in ascending order. And in array chapter, already we have seen how to arrange numbers in ascending order using bubble sort. So, here I have given the algorithm for bubble sort. So, let us see how to convert this algorithm into equivalent C program to arrange the student details in alphabetical order. Now, tell me what we have here for j equal to 1 to n minus 1. What is the meaning of this? Initial value of j is equal to 1. Final value of j will be n minus 1. Each time the value of j should be incremented by 1. That is the meaning of this for loop. So, here I write for, for what? j is equal to 1. j should be less than or equal to n minus 1. Instead of writing less than or equal to n minus 1, I can write j less than n. If you write equal to less than or equal to, here you have to write what? n minus 1 or you can simply write j less than n, but each time the value of j should be incremented by 1. So, I write j plus plus and this initialization and this condition and this increment or decrement must be enclosed within parenthesis. This is according to the syntax of the for loop. What do you mean by syntax? Syntax means rule. Expression 1 must end with semicolon, expression 2 must end with semicolon, expression 3 and expression 1, expression, expression 3 should not end with semicolon remember. And all this expression 1, expression 2 and expression 3 must be enclosed within parenthesis like this. Next, here within the for loop what we have? Another for loop. So, what I do? I open the brace and close the brace. So, within this inside this for loop, inside this for loop, let us write this portion now. Now, here what is the statement we have for i equal to 0 to n minus j minus 1. What is the meaning of this? Initial value of i is equal to 0. So, here what I write 
for i equal to 0, i should be less than or equal to n minus j minus 1. Instead of writing n minus j minus 1, if I write i less than, if I write less than or equal to, I should write n minus j minus 1. But if I write i less than, then you should not write n minus j minus 1 instead n minus j. But each time the value of i should be incremented by 1. Okay, now, the for loop starts here. Within this for loop, you have to write this if statement. So, I open the brace here and I close it. So, within the body of this for loop, we have to write this if statement. Now, see what we have here. We have in the algorithm, we are going to compare a of i with a of i plus 1. If I have 20 here, if I have 10 here, is 20 greater than 10? Yes, this is the place where we are going to exchange 10 and 20. But remember, here we are not comparing, in our example here, we are not supposed to compare the numbers, we are supposed to compare the names. Now, tell me, I want the student details of ith student. Okay. How you access the name of the ith student? We have to write a of i dot name. So, here I write if, if a of i dot name, ith name must be compared with what? i plus 1th name. So, how you access i plus 1th name? You have to write a of i plus 1 dot name. So, here I write a of i plus 1 dot name. Remember, this is the ith name and this is i plus 1th name. We have to check whether the first ith name is greater than i plus 1th name. Remember, this is a string, this is also a string. So, we cannot use relation operator such as greater than. Instead, we use one function by name strcmp. If you compare string compare name and ith name and i plus 1th name, if a of i dot name, if this name is greater than this name, the function strcmp returns a positive value which is greater than 0. So, if this name is greater than this name, what the function strcmp returns? A value which is greater than 0. So, I will check whether if this value which is written by this function, if it is greater than 0. If it is greater than 0 means ith name is greater than i plus 1th name. So, if this particular condition is true, if a of i greater than a of i plus 1, now look here, how many statements you are executing? Three statements. So, enclose them within the braces. So, here I have to write statements to exchange the entire record, ith record and i plus 1th record. So, do not simply write temp equal to a of i dot name a of i dot name equal to a of i plus 1 dot name, a of i plus 1 dot name is equal to m, do not write like that. The reason is based on the name, we are not accessing only the name here, we are supposed to exchange the entire structure. So, this statement I write as it is. So, I write temp is equal to a of i end with semicolon, a of i is equal to a of i plus 1, a of i plus 1 is equal to m entire student record, ith student record will be copied into where now? Temp. Then entire i plus 1th student record is copied into a of i. Now, temp will be copied into a of i plus 1 student. So, this is the logic which is used to arrange all the student records based on what? Increasing order of the names. But if you want to if you want to arrange the student record based on the average marks. So, you should not use strcmp here. Instead, you can simply write if a of i dot average greater than a of i plus 1 dot average. The rest remains the same. I hope you understood. Now, here for sorting, tell me what we require. We require the structure A the entire information is stored in the variable a. Then what we require? n also. Apart from a and n, what are the other variables I am using here? I am using i, j and what term? So, let us declare here. i comma j are of type what? Integer. So, i and j are of type integer. Tell me what about temp? Now, if you observe a of i, one student record is copied into where now temp. So, temp should be of type what student, you cannot write temp is of type name, marks 1, marks 2 or marks 3, it is of type what student. 
Now, all these statements must be enclosed within braces like this and here I write void sort student details. For sorting student details tell me what we require A which is an array and then what else we require EN. Whatever you require for sorting, we have to enclose them within the braces here. So, A is subtype what student, N is subtype what integer and these two are these two variables are called what formal parameters and that those things must be enclosed within parenthesis like this. So, we have written how to arrange the stu student details in ascending order of their names. I hope you understood. Ah, now, let us see how to display the name marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3. So, I write a of i name, comma a of i dot average. So, first I display name and then I display average. Name is of type what string. So, I write format specifier percentages. Average, it is a floating point. So, I write percentage f. I have display name and average on the screen. So, I should use a printf statement here. Okay. So, what are the other fields I should display? Marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3. How to access marks 1? A of i dot m dot marks 1. A of i dot m dot marks 2. Okay. And then you have to print it. And finally, let me print a of i dot m dot marks 3 and that can be done using which statement? Printf statement. So, here i the student record i may be 0, i may be 1, i may be 2 and so on. So, all these statements must be repeatedly executed. So, I enclose them within the braces. So, here I write for i equal to 0, i less than n and i plus plus. So, expression 1, expression 2 and expression 3 must be enclosed within a parenthesis like this. Now, tell me to display the student details, we require a and we require n. Other than n and a, what is the only variable I am using here? i. So, let me declare i as what? Integer. And before that, let us display the message what the sorted student records are. So, to display this message, the sorted student records, what should be the statement I should use here? Printf statement I should use. Okay, now, what is the only variable i? i should be of type what? Integer. Now, all these statements must be enclosed within braces. Here, we write void write student details. Now, tell me to display the student details, what we require? We require a and we require what? n also. So, a is what? a is an array and n. What is this a? a is an array of student records. So, I write student and here n is of type what? Integer. So, these two parameters must be enclosed within parenthesis like this. So, we wrote write student details, before that we wrote sort student details, before that we wrote uh, read student details. Now, we have to call all those functions and we have to arrange the student records in ascending order of their names. So, let us write the complete program here. This is their definition for what marks and this is the structure definition for the student and here we say void read student details a should be of a is what a is an array then what is another parameter n this is an array of what students n is of type integer these two parameters must be enclosed within a parenthesis and it should end with what semicolon now tell me what it is function declaration. Function definition already I have explained how to write this function read student details. Next, we display the student details. Again for that what we require a which is an array and then what else we require e n. a is an array of what students, n is of type what integer and these two are called what parameters and those two parameters must be enclosed within a parenthesis like this. And here Oh, what is one more function we are supposed to write? Void sort student details. This already I have explained. A is an array and n is also required. A is an array of what? Student, n is of type what? Integer. These two parameters must be enclosed within a parenthesis. So, let us write the complete main, let us write the main program now. Read student details. For reading student details, what we require? A and n. Here A and n are called what? Arguments arguments must be enclosed within parenthesis 
and then we sort the student details. Now copy this here. We write sort student details. For sorting also we require A and N. Enclose these two arguments again within the parenthesis like this. And finally, we are supposed to print the student details. So, here what we write? Write student details and here we write A comma N. Okay, now, we have to read the value for N. So, ampersand N, what is N is of type what? Integer. So, we use the format specified percentage D and here we write scan F. Normally, before scan F, what we write? Print F. So, I write print F, enter the number of a student. Now, look here and tell me what are all the variables we are using n and a. Here, n is of type what? n and a. What is a? a is an array. n is of type integer. a is an array of what? Array of student records. Now, all these statements must be enclosed within parenthesis like this and here we write void main. The declaration of printf and scanf is available in stdio.h. So, we go here and write hash include stdio.h. Can you tell me why we are using string.h? If you remember, in the function sort student details, we used a built in function by name string compare, str compare. And the definition, not the definition, I am sorry, the definition of library functions will be available in the library. Okay, but only the declaration is available in stdio.h and string.h. So, the declaration of string compare, the declaration of string copy is available in string.h. I hope uh, you understood how to write uh, the complete program to read the student details, sort the student details and print the student details onto the monitor or the screen. Okay, now, let us see one more section by name structures containing arrays, structures containing arrays. Now, look here, I write a name marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3 followed by what average and here name is character marks 1, marks 2, marks 3 are of type what integer, average, average is of type what float, we enclose them within the braces and here we write struct and here I write type def and here I write student. Next, I can use one variable yes, yes is of type what student. Now, if you observe name, what is name? It is an array of characters. So, how many bytes will be reserved? 10 bytes will be reserved for the variable name. Then what we have? Marks 1, for marks 1 how many bytes? 2 bytes, for marks 2, 2 bytes, for marks 3, 2 bytes and what about for a float average? it 4 bytes. Now, if you observe this is a structure, the name given for this structure is what here? Yes. Now, how many bytes it is going to occupy? 20 bytes. This is 10, 10 plus how much? 6 here, 10 plus 6, 16, 16 plus 4 how much? 20 bytes. So, the size of this structure is 20 bytes. Now, what I do? As it is, I will copy here. Look, we have name field and average name and average a copy as it is here, but instead of writing marks 1, marks 2 and marks 3, I say marks of 3. Now, let us see how to declare the variable now. If I say A is of type student, here A is of type this student and here yes, now look here, this how many fields are there here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fields are there, but here how many fields are there? Only 3 fields are there. Now, let us see how the memory is allocated for this structure. 10 bytes for name. Now, if you observe what we have, marks of 3, 2 bytes for marks of 0, this is marks of 3, mark, marks of 0, marks of 1 and marks of 2. So, this is identified by marks of 0, this is identified by marks of 1, this is identified by marks of 2 and what is other field? Average. Takes how many bytes? 4 bytes. So, the size of this structure and the size of this structure remains the same because we have used three separate variables marks 1, marks 2, marks 3, but here we are using what? An array of marks. So, an array can be inside a structure. So, here this is structure contains what? Array. This is also an array, but we are not manipulated this. Here we are manipulating marks 3. Okay. Now, this is a variable A, this is structure can be accessed using the variable A, this is structure can be accessed using the variable S. Yes. Now, this also occupies how many bytes? 20 bytes. Ah, now, look here, how many fields are there here? 
three fields are there. But here, here also we have marks one, marks two, marks three. Now, if you observe, only one field is there. Okay, the number of bytes three fields is going to occupy is same as the number of bytes which occupied by one single member here. So here, one single member marks of three. Okay, can be accessed using marks of zero, marks of one, as well as marks of two. Now let us see how to write the program for this. Now here an array such as marks of three. Here we have marks of three, name of ten, and so on. If you have an array something like this, so an array such as marks of three, thus can be a single member representing representing. See how many members are there here? Three members are there. So here you can write only one member. So an array such as marks of three, thus. Can be a single member representing a group of three subjects or marks of three subjects. So when we have to use an array inside a structure, whenever an array can be a single member representing more than representing a group, then we can use an array. Now inside a structure, if you have a group of variables having the same data type containing similar information, see marks one, marks two, marks three, all are of type what integer only. They contain marks, so we can use what an array instead of using marks one, marks two, marks three. Then it is better to use arrays. So what is the advantage of using arrays inside a structure? It is easy for the programmer to manipulate. A group rather than manipulating individual members of a structure. Okay, now let us see how to write the complete program using arrays inside a structure and how it can be manipulated. Suppose I have a variable a which is of type student. Now tell me, <coughs> we have name field. Then what we have marks of three. When I say marks of three, what you get? Marks of zero, marks of one, and this is marks of two. This is marks. So this is marks of zero. This is marks of one. This is marks of two. What is the other field we have? Average. Okay. Now I am not going to store the information of only one student. Instead, I am going to store information of many students. So a cannot be a normal variable such as this. A has to be an array. Okay, so n is of type what integer. So because a is an array, I write like this, indicating here I am having how many students information? Three student information. So let us see how to read the student details. Now this is a, a function declaration. It is also called function prototype because it ends with what semicolon. On similar lines, let us display. Let us write one function. Write student details again. A is what? A is an array, and n is of type integer. So a is an array of student. N is of type integer. Let us write one more function. Sort student details. So how many parameters are there? Two parameters are there. Now, how we can write the program? Read student details. How many parameters are there? Two parameters are there. One is a and n. Here, how many arguments should be there? Two arguments should be there. So we write a comma n. Now, after reading the student details, what we should do? We have to sort the student details. So how to sort the student details? Call this function. So here, I write sort student details. How many parameters are there here? Two parameters are there. So those two parameters I am going to write here. And those two here, a and n are called what arguments? Here, a and n are called parameters. So arguments must be enclosed within parentheses like this and end with the semicolon. So here we read the student details, and here we sort the student details, and finally, what we are supposed to do? We have to print the student details. How to print the student details? Write call this function. Write student details, and here I write a comma n. Now only unknown variable is n, so that we have to read the data that we have to enter from the keyboard. The value for n we have to enter from the keyboard. So how to enter the data for n using the keyboard? We can use ampersand n is of type integer. So what is the format specifier? I should use percentage d, and here I should use scanf. Normally before scanf, what write printf. 
So, printf enter the number of students. Now, what are the variables I am using here? n and a, n is of type integer, n I am using, what is another variable? a, a is an array of students. So, n is of type integer, a is an array of students. All these statements must be enclosed within braces like this and here I write void main. So, the declaration of printf and scanf is available in stdio.h. So, you can use here hash include stdio.h. Okay. So, I hope uh, you understood how to write the function main also, but uh, I have not explained how to write the function read student details, write student details and sort student details. These three functions uh, let us uh, see in the next class. In detail, I will explain how to write these three functions in the next class. Thank you very much.